What's happening, boys and girls? Gate 7 International is back. First post-match of the season. 2 nothing win. Cannot be too upset about that. It is a lovely evening. A late show today because of the game. Lombro, how are you doing, buddy? Doing good. A bit tired, but doing good. Suck it up. Drink a frappe. We'll survive until you go to bed. I know it's like midnight there, but you got this. Real quick, before we get into the meat of the show, keep checking in. There's a poll going on. Vote for your man of the match because it's that time of year. We're going to be going through man of the match every week now for these games, for these post matches. Tell us if you don't like who's in the chart, add a name in the comments. Check in. Tell us who your man of the match is if you don't like the choices we gave you and let us know how you feel. And for those of you that are tuning in, like and subscribe. There's only four likes already on the stream, and there's over 30 of you in here already. So really quick, you have two seconds. Go click that button. Every engagement helps grow the show and find more red and white fans. Greek subtitles, Spanish subtitles, French titles come up in 24 hours after live shows. But if you speak Greek, so do it. We are equal opportunity here, whatever you speak, whatever language. I think Lambro speaks French too, so we got that too. And as always, guys, support us on Patreon. Uh, Patreon is live. The first enhanced analysis has dropped for all of the expanded content to your patrons. This is a in-depth analysis of what happened with the Gank Olympiakos game. Uh, it's got some good feedback so far from the patrons that have seen it. So if you are interested in supporting us, go ahead, go on Patreon. You get early access to scouting reports. Uh, we have a WhatsApp group just for the patrons as well, where we drop news, early stats, early things that may not even ever be aired on social media or YouTube. So check that out. Support us. And guys, for the betting people out there, use our promo code GATE7INTL at betus.com.pa. You get a 125% deposit boost. Champions League qualifiers are in full swing. It's around the corner. And no better time to get started than with a lovely boost to your first deposit. And as always, guys, don't forget to gamble responsibly. A lot of people checking in here. The Ramon fan club, baby. Look at this. Look at this, Lambo. This is for you. Every week. Every week. Ramon. Ramon, why isn't he in the poll? If Themis Pop. Paris Zaff, right here. Good evening. Ramon enthusiast all over the world. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Everyone is checking in. Ramon needs to be on everyday starter. Only Ramon. Oh, my goodness, Lambro. Look, look what you did. Look what you did. Charlotte checking in. Charlotte, good to see you. Hello, gents. What a great win. It's early days, I know, but things are looking relatively positive. So far, fingers crossed that the momentum builds from here. Charlotte, thank you for tuning in. We always love having you. So, Lambro, give us your first thoughts today. I know you weren't happy in the beginning. We were man down for most of the game, or man up, I should say, sorry, for most of the game. Yeah. Give us your early thoughts on the match. Oh, I read the comments and everyone wants me to be positive, so I'm not going to be negative anymore. <laughs> but I promise you, I promise you it's super hard to be positive when you when you were there for seven the first 75 minutes in Gank and then you watch today. But I'm trying. I am trying so hard, so I'm not going to say anything bad about anyone. Um, the game today... The first, the first steps, win in the league. And I'm approaching this like my friend Martial has told me. Until October, November, all we care about is three points. So performances, I don't care. Three points, that's all I care about. Great game from Roddy Ney today. Um, I'm trying to think. Retsos maybe. But that's that's about it. Maybe Pepiel. Um, we're just gonna we're gonna keep building on this. But um, yeah, it, it's been difficult to watch. It's been really difficult to watch some of the Masuras was so bad today, though. I have to say, it was really, really yeah. Bad. But Masuras and and Carvalho. I mean, Carvalho is the uh, you know. Why don't we do this? Let Let's park. Let's park like the tactics and let's just talk about this really quick. 
Is he just the preseason king and nothing else? I mean, how many seasons now has he been with us? And we see something that looks good. Uh, the the season before last, he had a couple decent games when he came in halfway through the season and looked like he had some flair, something he could contribute. But I don't think this guy has what it takes to to, to lift the team and, and actually contribute anything. I mean, we saw two legs in Champions League, absolutely nothing. And then today against a uh, man up against a, a newly promoted team, absolutely nothing. I mean, at this point, at, at this point, what do you do? I mean, I'm ready to ship him off. How do you feel? Um, really mediocre again today. Carvalho was horrible against Gank, was terrible on the press. <laughs> I I just don't think he's good enough. Um I, I just don't see what's there because creatively he's pretty it reminds me a bit of Tiago Silva. Defensively, yep. he's really poor. Creatively, he's mediocre. So it's like, what's the point here? You know, it's like he's not good at anything. Also, his press is very poor in gank. I don't know if it came across on TV, but El Cab El Cabi El Cabi was was pressing well and like he was waving at Carvalho. He was like his he was getting really pissed off at Carvalho. Yeah. Because he wasn't points. picking up the second ball. El Gabi's making the run, running at the guy, and Carvalho's job is to pick up the passing lane, and he would just, like, sit there. Or, or, or I don't know, he was, like, floating in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. I know exactly what you mean because it was something but, that irritated me about him, too. But the strike, uh, El Gabi was, was pissed in Belgium. Like, yeah. he was so mad with Carvalho. Um, I don't know if I came across. But it, it's really just, like, we – we have quality now in this position, like in this where Carvalho plays is one of the few places we do have quality. So right. you just, you, you think to yourself, okay, come on. If, if we're going to do like Carvalho needs to go so that Scarpa can play in that position, Fortunis can play at that position. Also Pepe El can play at that position. And then we can bring in some real wingers to play out on the sides um, you, you can play Biel outside on the wing. You can play Fortunis there. But ideally, I would like to see those players play where Carvalho is. So it's it's a bit like, why are we wasting such a great position where we have so much talent and putting Carvalho? I guess it's because we don't have any wingers. Um, which showed again today. We need Do we need three wing? We need two wingers, I guess, right? We need two at least out and out because you, I mean, you still like, you want, you want some differentiation a little bit. So like you do want two out and out. Masuras can cover, bring something a little bit different. And, you know, we'll talk about Masuras in a little bit too, but yeah, I think two wingers is, is enough. So Brinich, two wingers. Yeah. And, and Brinich will give us that width. He, he would have been dribbling on all of these guys today, nonstop. You know, I mean, he wasn't part of the the team sheet today, naturally, because he just came in. He has to assimilate a little bit first. Scarpa was here, and you got a couple, a decent look at him, at least in the beginning. But it seems that everybody is here on the same page. Chat is also on the same page. Everyone's kind of pretty much. He must train well. I am convinced he must train well. And maybe just on the stage, he just can't do it because he has, he is a talented player. Like he has skill. And there are days like when he's on the, the or at least I remember this from the season before last when he came, like there were days of just like, man, great balls. Like when he's on, he's on. And then when he's off, he's off. And that was what we were told when he came in from Nottingham Forest, just like Tiago Silva, look, who have decent games here. But then when he looks off, he's garbage. But I mean, I, at this point, look, it's, we're trying to get to a different level with the Lubiakos and, and this is, I think we've seen enough off yeah. you go, have fun, maybe give him back to yes. forest. Who knows? <laughs> but there's more. Here. El Arabi, I, with all due respect, I really like the guy. Yeah. Met him before. Legend of the club. Just, it can't, it can't go on as well. It was, it's like really bad. Just, really bad again today he gets the goal but just non-existent hold up play miscontrols miss touches 
not very mobile. It's really disappointed because I really like the guy and I, I just wish there was a fairy tale ending, but it just seems like we're going to, we're, we're going to ruin this, this thing if we, we keep playing him here because he's nowhere near the level to play even at this level, in my opinion, at this point. So it's really, I hope there's a solution that can come for both sides. That's not too negative as well. Well, it sounds like the, the, the deal with the Moroccan team, what was it? Al Widad, Al, Al Widad, right? Oh, Al Widad. Yeah. Um, he's, uh, maybe he's on the way out there, but I mean, we have to bring another strike in striker. And I'm not, convinced by El Kabi. I've said it in the scouting report that I thought we were setting him up for disappointment. I did not like everybody calling him, you know, El Arabi 2.0. I'm I'm still not convinced. I you know, I, I it's early days still. I'm but I'm not convinced. In the scouting report I mentioned I wasn't convinced. I you know, his he doesn't do a lot of the things that Prime El Arabi did in build up uh, but he, what he does do is it's it's his like it's the Guerrero work ethic. He, he literally grasps. looks like Guerrero. Like I was there in Gang, yeah. and it was like any, and I felt like I was there watching Olympiak. Not quality aside, I was watching Olympiak was play freaking Krasnodar or something, and Guerrero was pressing their back line. That's what it it remind. Of course, nowhere near the level of that Olympiakos team. Let's not even start. But yeah. El Kabi challenges for every ball he's all right in the air he's weird he doesn't hold up but he tries to do the same way he runs and jumps and flick on um but el Kabi is is the when before the game i and i a lot of people were slating me because with Costa Solianos, i said we need a body for the game against um for the games against gank because we need a striker so bad and el Kabi to me is the body you know He's the Guerrero. Yeah. He's the third striker. Um, so Lipiakos, in my opinion, needs two strikers, one or two at least, because he's not your main. You're not going. He's not your Bakambu replacement. Let's say so. We still need that big striker that I think Cordon is trying to analyze the market and bring in. You see that a name leak today with Boye. I think his name is. Yes. Um, Rafa Mir's name is in the press constantly. So things are happening. This isn't the final squad. There's a few patchwork solutions in there. If you look at the bench, we don't even fill the bench out completely. I don't know if you noticed this, but if you go to the, you know, you got your starting 11, then you go to the bench. We're still short. Like we have three or four less players than, than most teams run out. So we're still very thin in certain positions. Um, so there, the team needs to be built out. Reinforcements are coming. We talked about it. Ortega is coming. I think that's his name, the left-sided fullback. Heze is coming in. Um, Brinich is coming in. Gustavo Scarpa came in. I'm expecting a striker to come in. I'm expecting a winger to come in within the week as well. So... This is it. We're in August 20th now. This is when the deals happen, guys. So I think the big key, though, is when you're watching the Solid Bell course and it's, it is, it's difficult to watch and you're struggling to see where is this going. This is not the end product. We're still building something here. So it's okay to say, okay, the football we're watching isn't great at the moment. And to say, but we do trust the process and we we know this is going to take time to build. So, yes, it's not where we want it yet, but we always knew this was going to take a long time to build. Right. So, we can't lose the faith. We can't turn on the players. We can't turn on the manager either. We need exactly what we've been saying. Trust the process. Yep. You know, don't burn this down. It's difficult right now. The football's not very good. But the results are all that matters, you know. These are the games we dropped early last season that probably exactly. lost us in the title race. So it's like exactly. these games are so important to win. All the games until we play Ike in, in four or five match days is key. Pick up all the points we can get. Yep. That's, no, you're, that's you're, my key. you're exactly right. 
I, I'm trying to stay on track here. So, yeah, no, you're look, you're you're absolutely right, and this is um, it is a transition year. And with respect to the match today, if we're, I would have been panicking if we weren't creating opportunities, right? Which we were by the end of the first half, we had, I mean, nothing was on target, but we had had almost double digit shots. We had, I think it was like nine or 10 shots in the first half. That's not bad mm -hmm. over, you know, by the time we scored that first goal, we had had over 20 shot opportunities. And that's not even including some of the, the balls that were played down the flanks where a guy, where a guy like Yoros Masuras was completely whiffing the opportunity, not even getting a shot off. Uh, you know what I mean? Or or times where Yusef El Arabi was not able to make it on, onto a pass that was in the final third. We're not even including things like that. So if we but were the XG, getting... I'm looking now the XG without the the, the XG was 1.76. A penalty is what 7.2.72. Well, it depends on the on which one you're using. Is it Fat Mob? I'm using Flash Score. I... Oh, so anyway, see... it says it's 1.76. So, so if if it's like Y Scout, Y Scout does the Y Scout does the XG uh, for a penalty as 0.76, basically. That's so, if it's Y Scout. So it'll be different. So we but it'll have be around different one that. XG, let's say, without the penalty yeah. playing mm -hmm. over 85 minutes against 10 men. It's yep. No, it's not good. It's not good, but uh, yeah. No, it's not. It's it's not good. But there were times with Corberon where we had less than that. In fact, there yeah. were times with Corbett on where we barely got a shot on target. Now, of course, you do the expect non -game. better. The non-game yeah. was, a, yeah, that was the non-game was was miserable. And the but and here's another difference too, right? Like you look at, uh, and I brought this up in the in the enhanced analysis, and I know we didn't do post match for either one of those uh, qualifier games, but if you look at how we were shaped defensively, if you remove the penalty and you remove the extra time goals. We didn't allow Gank, or in regular time, we didn't allow Gank even one XG over two legs in regular time. In the first match, they got all of their opportunities in extra time. So it's you know it was clear that we weren't 100% match fit, or at least our players weren't. But the the general trend, especially for a team like Gank, who Okay, they didn't they didn't progress against Servette, but they created a hell of a lot more opportunities against Servette than they did against us, and they didn't score them. They create a hell of a lot more opportunities in the Belgian league than they did against us. Look at look at their average XG created over the course of their first official matches. The average is almost four. And what has their average been against us over two legs? Not including the penalty. Total, even if we include the extra time on Y Scout, it's under two. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. In regular time, we barely they barely did anything defensively. So that's one positive. The shape, the shapes that we're seeing on the defensive side of things, it's that like four four one one. We we play more mid block when we're not pressing as high. The the two mids sit deeper while the wings will pinch in a little bit. You have the forward that's sitting and running at the defenders, whether it's El Arabi or El Kabi, and whoever's playing in that one behind him, who are the makeshift 10, is supposed to be rotating and helping. And we see how when the high press works, the line elevates. We see the wingers also move up. Uh, the fullbacks get more involved. Even the center back gets more involved, which is interesting. But uh, beyond that, the shape defensively, I'm actually pretty happy with. It's... Uh, we have some kinks to work out, which I think when we bring some of the, more of these pieces in, it's it's going to improve down down the road. But I will say this: drastic improvement in terms of the 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 match tempo when we're when we're on the offensive side of the ball, and in terms of passes per possession, we are mm -hmm. averaging overall over double what it was last season. Do you know how many passes last season we averaged? per possession it's like it was bad it was bad even with michelle it was awful i have no idea before michelle came it was it was 2.2 passes per possession before michelle after michelle mm -hmm. it went to just over three right now we're averaging over five 
that may not seem like a lot, but like really good teams that possess well, they're like six, above, like in the high five, six, seven, right? That's what you'll see a lot, or at least based on the comparison here. Ike's team was above six last season, just to keep that in mind. Okay. So the fact that we're getting to a point now where we're, we're, we're working on possession, we knew Diego Martinez in preseason, this was all he was working on. Maintaining, possessing, and moving, moving around to pass and, and move, which we do all of this a little bit better at least than we did last year. So these are things that I see as, okay, today we struggled to score. That was 100%. We did struggle to get forward here and there, but – at least we made a couple of opportunities. These are baby steps. And I'm willing to accept that as long as I continue to see the improvement. So that being said, I think I think that we still have a little bit of a ways to go before things really get – before we start to panic a little bit more because I think we're on the right track. And I think we may have lost Lambro here. Can't tell if he's here. Can't tell if he's not. But uh, maybe if Lombardo, he looks like he's uh, struggling with his hand over his face. Uh, maybe he maybe he logs back in, but looks like you guys have me solo for a little while. Uh, I'm going to jump into some of the comments here before we move on with some more of the match analysis. Uh, River RR, El Cabi seems like some random dude who plays with the rest of the team. Look, the guy does press. I'll give him that. But I told you guys, I stressed this in the scouting report. Um, I I don't see this guy. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets like 10 goals this season. It doesn't take much when you're playing for Libyakos in one of our good seasons for us to be getting 10 goals, a striker with 10 goals a season. That wouldn't surprise me. But I, he's not by any means like a prime Yusef El Arabi. There's just... There's just not, uh, it's just, no, there's no way. Um, uh, Sasa uh, Yara, we have the slowest front line in Europe at the moment. Masuras El Arabi Fortunis. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Masuras really isn't that slow. He just can't really do anything to separate himself from defenders. He doesn't have a toolkit besides running past them. I would argue that he's not necessarily slow. He gets behind defenders all the time. That's how he gets into all these positions where he gets the ball in a scoring position. The problem is he can't effing shoot. He can't finish. How many opportunities do you get before you finish a ball? This is the problem with Yoros Masuras. He offers nothing else. The occasional service into the penalty area. But when you cannot do much else, you can't dribble on players one-on-one. -on -one. You can't do anything else your value is in your, whether you score or not right now, there's no value. He's not scoring. It is what it is. It sucks. Maybe it's a little bit toxic, but that's how it is. Um, Elias Mayas, does anyone know why Porozo hasn't played? He's really young man. Um, and right now we found some chemistry with, uh, with Retzos, uh, uh, Retzos Freire played okay, decently well together. Freire has a, definitely has a little bit of that, Meria or Usainu Ba nonsense where he gives up some stupid shit once in a while. But um, uh, he, I, I said in the scouting report with him, he, he could be a project down the road. He might take more time to assimilate. So don't, don't worry about that. He's a really young guy and um, I'm not, you guys shouldn't be too concerned about whether or not he he's playing right now. This is going to be, uh, um, he's going to be a good player. Uh, Stefanos Dris, our patron, uh, one of our newer patrons. I get that we're rebuilding, but I don't like that we left it so late and risk getting knocked out of the Europa League. First, I forgot to announce the new patrons. I am so sorry, guys. Uh, but Stefano Dris, one of our new patrons, thank you for supporting. Iraklis Gorosoglu, thank you so much for supporting. Is it, that was today. Costas Colias and Dimitris Lika, thank you guys so much for uh, supporting the show. Thank you so much for supporting us and our evolution of the content we're going to provide you guys on the show. Uh, Dimitri, guys, was there when the wildfires were happening in Zakintho. Thank God. Thank you to everybody that has been, all of the firefighters, all of the emergency personnel that have been there trying to help. Thankfully, they stopped the fire before it got to Dimitri. We were in contact with him the whole time, but um, ha thankfully he's safe. Thankfully that didn't get become a worse situation. Um, 
anyway, back to the uh, back to the point at hand. It's uh, look, guys. It's difficult. We knew we weren't going to be able to bring a lot of people in. Gordon said, Gordon said that the deals were going to happen in August, and we've seen that. Heze came in. We got in Brinich. Now Scarpa and uh, the left backs coming. Ortega. The deals are coming. The deals are happening. But we listen. The, the the value proposition of this club. We've talked about it since we started this show. We have talked about how this club is a. It, it's one of two things for players in Europe. Right. It's a second chance saloon for players that have done poorly in Europe and have not performed well in at their clubs, maybe from a top league. I think guys like Joel Campbell, even Miralas, right? Because he was playing in France. He was playing for St. Etienne. Guys that don't do well, and then they need a spark in their career. Olympiacos was usually a team. We were in Champions League. So you got some exposure on the Champions League level. And it was a way for you to kind of rebound. And on the other side, for young players with European aspirations, maybe they weren't getting looks in the top five leagues. They needed a place where at least they could play competitively, whether it was Champions League, Europa League. We were that stepping stone. It's how we got players from from second from the second division France, promising players. Look at Madi. That's where we got him from. And and this is the value proposition we give to these Argentinian guys who have been looked at by other clubs. Heze was a nightmare of a transfer. Uh, debacle, but we got him. And part of the reason is the project that was offered. So I get that it's frustrating, guys. I, I do understand that it's you. we want the business to be done earlier. We all do. But this is just the reality of the situation. So, um, you know, hopefully the business gets done. And I mean, I'm not going to be surprised if we're not, if we're seeing business get done until like September. But you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Paris underscore Zaf. Do you think Costa is really going to leave? I've been seeing this and there were comments in the comment section talking about, you know, Sport 24 again saying, look, with all due respect, I, I love Sport 24. I love, uh, you know, one of my favorite Greek journalists is there. I love Themis Gesaris, how he analyzes games. But I'm sorry, guys. Like, there's no Greek paper that I trust 100% with transfer rumors. I believe that Costa, the offer for Costa is very real. I do believe that. And he'd be stupid if he wasn't seriously thinking about that money because that is life-changing money, generational wealth for him and his family down the road. But what in Costa's history makes you guys think he will take a deal like that? He will wait till the last second to try and get a renewal from Olympiacos. And if it doesn't get somewhere in the ballpark of what he wants, Maybe he takes the deal, but he's had better offers in the past from better clubs and better competitions, and he never took those deals. And I don't see why he would start now, especially when he has, I believe he has one kid, one on the way, he, even if it's two kids. Correct me if I'm wrong. But I wouldn't be surprised if he stays here, to be perfectly honest with you guys. Um, question here from Nolan Lidner Fox. Did we sign Zagaritis? Also, why are we going for failed Panathinaikos prospects? Um, I haven't seen, we haven't heard personally on the show anything about Zagaritis. We, we have, we can say, we've said it before over the course of the last three years, because as of like three or four days ago, Gate 7 International is three years old. Happy birthday to us. Happy third birthday. Thank you guys for all of your support for helping us get that far. It's crazy what's been going on the last three years. Crazy who we've met, how many of you we've gotten a chance to meet in person, the relationships that we've made, the people that we've met. That's all thanks to you. But we've met a lot of people, a lot of sources, all over Europe, all over the world, actually. Thanks to the work that's been done here. Thanks to the support that you guys have given us. Without that support, we wouldn't. no one would care to talk to us. And we haven't really heard much about Zagaritis. Doesn't mean that nothing's going forward, but are you really going to complain about a nobody or a failure from Panathinaikos when Alexandropoulos, who by all rights, according to them, was a failure, he, was, he wasn't he was rated by Jovanovic. They didn't think he could do anything. He was not Champions League quality, is what some Panathinaikos fans have said to me. He's looked pretty good for us so far. 
maybe Zagaritis will would do the same. You don't know. We'll see. Uh, comment here from Helio. Shout out to Retzos. He's flawless these three games. I'm actually in shock. You and me both, buddy. I, if you had asked me to put money on who the surprise of the season or the breakout player of the season would be, I never once would have considered Baniotis Retzos. Ever. I am so, and I can't tell you how happy I am to see this. This kid has been through so much. He has had so many injuries, so many expectations not met from every single club this guy went to. I mean, it's one of those things where if, if he rebounds, He's still young, guys. <laughs> Panos Retzos, is, he's not like a, a finished player by any means getting ready for the twilight the twilight of his career. He's like, this is crazy to think about for me at least because I just feel like he's been around for so long. But he's only 25. He's got at least five, six years of prime football left in him. Imagine, imagine he has a good season. We sell him off again. All of a sudden, everything we said about bringing Retzos back and renewing him, like all of that gets gets binned. We apologize for all of those comments if that happens because he turns it around. We just got to hope he stays healthy, but I'm happy for the kid. I'm really happy that he's continuing to, he's playing well. We just need him to stay healthy, man. Just please, by God, stay healthy. Callum Spencer, shout out to Rodin He's looking amazing this season. He's picking up, man. Okay, there was like a little bit of a downturn at the end of the season. No surprise. But he looks good, man. He's He was a breath of fresh air when we brought him in because he actually overlapped and gets forward, and he gets forward all the time. Yeah, but Rodin man, you, you and me both. I thought he had a solid game today, got forward a lot. Um, and I really liked, and some of you guys in the comments have already said this up, I really did like how he combined with Costa when Costa switched to the right side. I don't know if you guys, uh, you know, maybe some of you that didn't bring that up, maybe you didn't notice it, but I loved how the two of them combined off each other. The it Maybe it had something to do with Bunset Icos being a man down, maybe. But still, the, the movements that they had, how they caught some of the defenders off the pass, I loved it. May, I would like to see that moving forward. And now that Brinic is here, maybe if Brinic is playing and starting we see costa forced to that right side but i i liked what i saw there i would love diego martinez to, to push that and see where it takes us um uh ben de rosia will any of our new signings be ready for thursday i really don't want to see cavario or masura start ben listen man pucker up strap in because i don't think they'll be ready in time they might be on the list but I don't think they'll be ready in time. You're going to see Masura start, and we're probably going to see Carvalho start. I hope not. I hope we ship Carvalho off, but he's probably starting. I don't know what else to say, buddy. I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but coaches, the coaches we've seen, Diego Martinez, Pedro Martins, a lot of these guys, they, remember, coaches stick to their guns. They deal with what they know, not what they, not what they don't, not what they haven't seen yet, not what is an un- known quantity so you can expect him to start uh another comment here from yorgos besis first time i watched your live and i can really say that i'm amazed by how well you know the team despite the great distance you may have from greece your analysis and your placements are much better than all those who do something similar here in greece great job really keep going like that bro yorgo thank you so much for the comment man it's comments like that that keep us moving uh since it seems like it's your first time watching here, or you even said it was your first time, uh, I'm the one that do, does most of the data analysis for us, so I pay attention to numbers. I watch every game, I review the footage, and I look at numbers. That's what I do. I know not everybody in Greece does that, but that's that's my thing. I like to look at numbers. I think that's the best way you can identify trends. I think it's the best way we can evaluate players. That's what we do here at Gate 7 International. Changing the way the analysis in the Greek Super League is done. I wanted to talk about, before we get into some more comments, Pepio. A lot of you were happy with him today, but I did see some comments on social media during the game that people weren't happy. Pepio, was he good today? 
or just relative to the team. He's one of the options for man of the match. And looking at how the votes are, a lot of you have voted for Pepio. So for me, I was happy with him today. Look, in the first half when maybe we weren't doing so well and messing up chances, I thought he was the best player in that first half. Maybe that's not saying much. Who knows? But Pep Biel was, as far as I'm concerned, doing doing his job. Create he okay, maybe he had some really bad shots. He scored the goal though. He ends up getting the goal. And then in the first half, he had three balls that I can think of off the top of my head that went to that led directly to shots. Relatively dangerous ones, too, at that. So outside of him, Retzos, maybe Alexandropoulos. Who else can you say had a really good first half? Madi, maybe. Rodine was okay, but Rodine got way better in the second half. Way better when the subs came on. Our halftime tweet was take off El Arabi, take off Carvalho, take off Masuras, and the goal comes. Well, El Arabi didn't come off, but Masuras and Carvalho came off, and look, the goal came. Really, things got moving, especially when Cosas Fortunis came on. I mean, within two, three minutes, the guy dribbled by two two defenders and ended up playing a, a ball for a shot assist. Draws the penalty. What can you say? But going back to the question, and give me your answer in the comments. Were you Was Pepeo good today? Do you think he actually had a good performance? Or was he good just relative to the rest of the team? and how some of the rest of the team were playing. Recently, especially if you the for the patrons that watched the enhanced analysis of the Genk game, I was ready to, you know, say look, let's just move Pep on. He hasn't looked good preseason. He hasn't really looked good. We're not playing him in as a 10. We're not playing him in his natural position. It's frustrating. He's struggling. We're struggling to watch it. Why are we doing this to ourselves? Why? But then you see a game like today, and it's like, God, he does have some quality. That's right. This is the reason. But again, we're playing him outside. We're not playing him in his natural position. When, when, wh what are we going to do here? You know, Scarpa can play on the wing. Gosas Fortunis has been playing on the wing. When do we tell Carvalho to F off and just play Pep Biel there and see what happens? When are we going to do it? I don't know. Part of me thinks it won't happen. And if that's if that's the case, look, we get good money for him, you let him go. But I was happy to see that he had a decent performance today. I was. I think he had a great performance. Um, I think he looked very well. And I'm hoping, I don't know, we get some clarity on the situation because we have a lot of 10s. Uh, somebody, somebody here was talking about how many tens, where are we? Here we go. Mathematics, mathematics. I think this is a new, uh, or at least if you're, if you're not new, I haven't seen you talk before. How many tens do you think we'll have this season? Well, the record last season, I believe was, let's see, James Rodriguez, Fortunis Pepiel, Carvalho was sent on loan. So that was three tens. I'm trying to think, am I missing one? Did we bring any other tens? Zinker Nagel, we shipped off on loan. So I guess at one point we had four tens. Yeah, I think, well, the record seems to be three through the regular season. And right now we have Pepiel, Garbayo, Fortunis, and now Scarpa. It's four tens. Are we going to continue the regular season? If the transfer window shuts and <laughs> we still have them, we'll break our record. We'll have four tens, boys. The record will be broken. We'll see. We'll see what happens in that. Let's hope that's not the case again. Um, Irakor. Considering how thin we are in the center forward position, should we consider giving AK-47 an opportunity? I like the thought process, but my answer is absolutely not. Hell no. Ship him off. Send him to Thessaloniki. Adis can take him back. I don't give a shit. No thanks. Adios, sir. No thank you. I'd rather test the market somewhere else. Mm -mm. Not me. No thank you. Comment from Helios here. Pep is a weird player. He has no position. He's a false nine kind of guy. Not a creator, but he is quality inside the opposition area. And he, he in that respect, you're right. Think about the opportunities he created today. Think about the areas where he was most dangerous. Where were they? 
It was a little closer inside. Costa, with a C, brought up in the preseason when we saw Pep Biel given, afforded the space and the ability to get inside, he looks dangerous. But when he's forced to stay wide, that's when we get nothing out of him. And that's what we've seen so far, except for today. Now, today was an anomaly because we were man advantage most of the match. Are we going to have that type of space? an ability for him to drift central in other games. Not with the top teams, maybe the bottom table or mid table teams in Greece. Sure. I could see that happening hundred percent. So, ah, thank you. Chat Valbuena. Yeah, you're right. So we did, we did have four. Then we had four. Thank you guys. I, I always forget that technically he is a 10 first. Thank you for, uh, for checking me on that. I appreciate you chat. I love you guys. You guys are the best. Best source of information. What am I going to Google for when I have you? You're the real MVPs of Gate 7 International. Thank you, guys. And I don't know if Lambro's coming back. It looks like he's having some connection difficulties, so I'm here by myself. And it's not always fun to talk by myself. So I'm going to drop the link in chat if you want to have a chat with me. There you go. The link is there. Just connect. We can have a little chat. Going on 40 minutes here. Probably not going to go too much longer because it is late. I know for you guys in Greece. Uh, you're seven hours ahead of me. It's got to be 1 a.m. So won't keep you guys up too long. While we're at it, a uh, couple hundred of you have passed through already. A few hundred of you, I should say. So if you have not done so already, guys, please hit that like button. Costs you nothing, but it is really helpful for us. Invaluable, as we say. There is no value you can place on you setting those engagements because that's how we find more Libyakos fans. That's how we find more people who are not a Libyakos fans and attract them to a Libyakos. We have Patreon members that are not Greek. Our co-host, Marcial, not Greek, loves a Libyakos. The founder, one of the founders of the show, Peter, for those of you that may or may not remember him, not Greek at all, loves a Libyakos. That's the beauty of what a show like this does is it connects people from around the world and connects people through a club that we all love. It's fantastic stuff. So help us out. Hit that like button, engage, help us find more people. Even if they're not already Libyakos fans, let's make them a Libyakos fans. That's what this does. Back onto the discussion at hand, back on to the post-match. Uh, I saw a comment here from um, Elias Mayas. I kind of think Pep always drifts in games. I might be wrong, but he never stays on the wing. Even when playing there, he drifts central a lot. You're, you're not wrong, buddy. You are not wrong. 100%. 100%. I saw somebody bring up Hamas. No, 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 no. Uh, look, Hamas distribution wise is fantastic, but in Europe, the guy can't run. You have to have two, you, not just two, you have to have wingers, real wingers running and everybody moving around him. You have to build the team around Hamas, and we don't have that luxury right now. We do not. Uh, Stefano Dress, why did we get rid of Dabo? I was hearing such good things about him being a big talent, and he suddenly goes on a free. Any idea what happened? So he was a big talent, but a couple things happened with Dabo. Unfortunately, he had a disciplinary issue with Levadiakos last season, uh, which cut that loan a little bit short. Um, and then following that, I don't know if the club had patience for him, but he never really, tra he never trained with the club. He never trained with the first team following that. He, he wasn't part of preseason and, uh, you know, I don't think they wanted to deal with him after that. It's a shame. It's a shame. And his contract was cut. There's no loan, nothing. Contract was cut and he's gone. He's playing now. I believe it's second division Turkey. It's a shame because he's a talented kid. Um, don't know what went on behind the scenes at Levadiakos that caused him to have the 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 disciplinary issue issue, but it is what it is. Um, you know, people are going to say we mistreated the player in a way, and may, maybe maybe you're right. We don't really know what happened behind the scenes, but that's what we do know. So we've got uh, Johnny Zabuka. Melbourne. We we need Peter back. We're trying to get Peter come back. As you guys know, he's off in uh, 
the Eskimo land and the Arctic. Peter studying all sorts of crazy things up there. He plays with polar bears and that's, uh, that's just uh, when maybe when he gets less busy, he can join us again. But you know, right now life has caught up to, to Peter. We've got a comment here from Vida Scaluiani. Stop thinking Greek. Players who do only one or two things are useless. I hate to see players in the 21st century. They can't slash don't do the basics. I don't think you're wrong, buddy. I don't think you're wrong at all. Um, I don't think you're wrong at all. Ephthemis Pop, why on earth we sent Kitos to Baos and kept Ramon? Well, we don't know what the fee was because the fee was undisclosed. But... It probably had something to do with FFP. Not, not, not necessarily that we were saving wages, but we don't know what the sale value of him was. But depending on what the sale value was, it was probably something that helped us because we had a big reporting deadline before he got sold. Remember, guys, July 15th was a big reporting deadline for FFP. We have major FFP issues, whether you believe it or not. I know some of you are always saying, guys, we have to, you know, Marinaki has to put money in. He's not investing. He invests. He's lost a lot of money. Three years in a row, losses. So it's um, the it's just it's just the way things are. Also, the Kitsos, he looked good playing for Omonia. I had posted some data from Omonia, but I don't think a new coach was ready to take a punt on him. And we're looking at options. We're looking at options like Ortega that are a tier above Quitos currently. I know Quitos maybe had potential, but it, it is what it is, guys. It sucks. I know you want to see Greeks play. I get it. But unfortunately, it's not, um, it, you know, there there is a buyback, I believe, for Quitos. So we'll see what happens while he's playing at Volos. We'll, we're going to monitor that situation. If I remember correctly, there is a buyback. But we'll see how, uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, Johnny Tsabuka, of course we believe it. We brought like 30, 30 players in last season. Yeah, I know. I did the scouting reports. Uh, my life was was miserable over the summer. I was doing the scouting reports in Kalimno. It was not fun. But it was it was a it was a tough time for the club, and we're hoping that that's the last we're gonna see of that type of that type of management, that type of business, that type of however else you want to call it, transfer business anymore. So it's uh, it's just one of those things. We've kind of gone a little bit off topic from the game today, uh, but we have touched on some of the major points. I do want you guys, because I know there were a couple of people here talking about how bad um, uh, we were today. A lot of people putting in names also of uh, um, of players that uh, players that are being linked with us. Um, Bali's Racing. Look, Fadiga is a talent. Um, he's asking if there's any news for you, the non-Greek speakers here. Any news about Fadiga? Um, for me, he seems like a big talent. He, he, he is, but I had said I didn't see room on the roster for both for guy for both Dabo and Fadiga, but it doesn't look like we're keeping either one. Uh, Fadiga is is going, whether it's a loan or or a purchase, he's going. Agibu back at Atromidos, and Fadiga is Fadiga is not part of the plans. At least this year, I think he'll come back for a training camp um, next summer. Um, Let's see if I missed any more any more questions while I was here. You guys have these flying in, but um, it's going to. There's going to be a lot of movement. There's already been a lot of movement. I mean, let's look at look at the departures. Just while we're on the tangent here, look. Let's look at all the players that have left the club so far. It's not as much as it was last season. I mean, last and don't forget Martin's uh, Pedro Martins's first season with the club. I mean, we had like 30, 30 or 40 players in and out both then and then this past summer. Last year's summer was like very similar. So many people that were were in and out and gone. It was crazy. This year, it's not as 
ridiculous when it when we're measuring like looking at like the total number of departures if we're looking at everybody that we've canceled contracts for and moved on not including maybe b team players we've actually moved it's been 15 people 15 players have left the club now that still seems like a lot maybe to an you know in a normal situation but players we've gotten fees for oleg onyakuru zinkernagel kane Zimmer Botuzzi, and then, of course, the undisclosed fee from Kitsos. And then guys that we lost, Bakambu, um, you know, he's now at Galatasaray. Uh, Gary Rodriguez is off in Turkey for An Ankurugu, I believe, or A Ankara Guchu, or however you say it. Um, Christensen was, is now at Kifisia, newly promoted club in Greece. Valbuena is in Cyprus. Uh, Maxi Lovera is back in Argentina. Uh, that's another tragedy but you know unfortunate with that this guy never got a chance never had the quality that we thought we spent some money on him too there's also the guy that the scottish kid that we got from um that we got from portugal and then loaned back i think we loaned him back to estoril and then uh yanam villa contract canceled uh i still don't think he signed for a club and socrates and then kasami those are the guys that we've we've lost agibu of course as i mentioned is uh, loan to Adromidos, so that's 16. And then there's still more people that we're looking to move on. We haven't sold Cisse yet. Cisse, as you guys may have seen, there's apparently uh, we received an offer for like under 2 million. Ugh. But he's gone. Senubaz probably getting moved on. Um, and then we never, we never saw a renewal of Caloyeropoulos. Bagagliani is still around, but we haven't seen Caligeropoulos. Who knows what happens there? So there's still a lot of movement to happen. There's still some time, plenty of time uh, in the transfer window uh, to see more, more deals being done. Johnny Tabuka, I'd prefer to invest in Fadiga rather than Carvalho. I, I'm with you. Arispan, Ramon at least knows the position and has situational awareness. Kitos is not starting material for Volos, and if his official debut is indicative, he'll be on loan at the second division after January. That's only one performance. Maybe he picks it up. Who knows? We'll see. But we know that Ramon, uh, it's been said that Ramon has the physical characteristics. He's just not, um, just, he just doesn't have like the footballing ability. So, yeah, it is what it is. Bali's racing here. She's saying Bali need to go away. You can't live with the mistakes of saying Bali anymore. I, I think the mistake, I don't want to say the players themselves were mistakes because we got good use out of them. The mistake was not selling them when the stock was high. We had a 10 million offer for Cisse that we said no to because we wanted 15. We had great offers from France. Same at the end. We had a 15 million buyout on his loan option there. They didn't meet it. They were willing to offer it. was like eight to 10 million and we didn't take it. We should have taken it. One of the biggest problems that we didn't value or I don't think we correctly valued our players and to, to move them on properly. Um, regarding Ba. Once Boss started making the comments like he was ready for the Premier League, I would have shipped him off there. His head wasn't in the right place. He thought he was bigger than the shoes he was filling were. That's the un that's the unfortunate part. Um, the Scaloyani again. In our best times, the defenders also helped offensively, especially the fullbacks. The midfielders, defensively and offensively, were very good, and the forwards also helped the defense through pressing speed and endurance we exchanged the good ones with mediocre ones and now we're trying to fix it that's exactly you're exactly right man no one's going to argue that that's 100 percent right look look at the team we had the 2019 2020 season and then look at what what happened the covid messed a lot of that up i do blame a lot of that because martins got super super conservative following the covid uh the covid break so it, it's a shame, but you're you're absolutely that's that's correct. That is correct. And we 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 replaced really good pieces with just the wrong. We were we replaced circular pieces with square ones, trying to fit them in circular holes. 
that's that's the really big problem. Uh, it's 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 a really 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 big problem. Uh, now, guys, we are going on close to an hour here, so we're gonna get ready and wrap up. Uh, went on a couple of tangents, talked to you about, uh, went into the comments, talked. Nobody wanted to join me. Nobody wanted to join me for a chat. Lombardo left me, so you guys left me to chat on my own, but that's okay. I do it. I do it. We do it to to keep the community together, to chat. I love seeing you guys. But let's move on to the man of the match and the coach's grade. Tell me, if you haven't already voted in the poll, go ahead and vote in the poll. And if you don't like the choices that are in the poll, say your own. There's plenty of people that thought Rodinay should have been in there. I apologize for not including him in the poll. Oversight on my part. I thought there would certainly be some people that would think El Arabi deserved it because he scored the penalty. But uh, check out the poll. Vote. And regarding my man of the match and coach's grade, my man of the match, guys, today, I'm giving it to Pep Biel. Costas Fortunis, I would give it a close second because when he came on, I mean, it was... Fi- we just looked more deadly when he came on. He was making great moves, playing the ball. And I mean, what else do you want from the guy? But Pep Biel, it's the, it's the man of the match for me. Because even in that first half, when we were struggling to, to get shots on target, guys, there were 24 shots. We got one on target. That was the goal. That's not good. Look, you can't ask more of a team that makes 24 chances like 24 chances is great, but you can ask them to put them on frame and, and, and do more getting better chances in front of the goal. So, but that's, you know, we've already kind of touched on that. We've talked about that a lot already. I'm not going to beat a dead horse in that regard, but Pep Biel, he had plenty of opportunities, plenty of shots. The guy I think had more than 10 crosses today. He had an absurd number of crosses. I wouldn't be surprised if I look and I see he had had the half the crosses of the team. Um, uh, Rodine is uh, is a fair shout. I'm not going to disagree with you guys. He he did create a lot of chances and, and he did create the Pepe goal. So that that is a shot. Definitely deserves a shot. I didn't think about it uh, in that way, but 100% he deserves a shot. And I think you guys would be very, very justified in, in giving them that. But uh, I'm still sticking with my guns. I'm sticking with Pep Biel. Coaches grade. Um, now, uh, we do the coaches grade by letter, but you can do it by number as well. We do the A, B, C, D, E, F system, but you can also do 1 to 10. Uh, I am going to... I, I'm going to stick with a, a, a B, a solid B. I'll, I'll say B. Maybe that's a little bit too nice because I do believe that it is a bit unacceptable that we couldn't get a lead early. I think some things, uh, I mean, maybe that met is too high. Cause in, if I were giving him a B, then technically in the number system, that would be close to an eight. So maybe I give him a C because that's more like a seven, maybe a C minus or C eh, well, solid. We'll just say C he gets the job done. He gets the result. He made the right changes in the second half and the changes that were made. We did start to perform better, get more dangerous situations in front of goal. But I do think that when you are going man advantage, there's no reason why we shouldn't have been at their throats. And, but then at the same time, he did make the changes two of the changes, at least that we wanted at halftime. I mean, he changed Ramon off, and I didn't think Ramon was necessarily the problem, but it's – and and how how can you really hold it against Diego Martinez when your guys aren't, aren't, aren't finishing the opportunities in front of them? Maybe for that reason, I'm going to stick with a B. I'll, I'll do B minus, B minus. Changes he made had impact. Maybe the starting lineup wasn't so great, El Arabi, and then he brings on um, El Cabi, who didn't really do much for us either. But bringing on Cosas Fortunas is C plus B minus. I'm kind of like stuck between there, C plus B minus because I can't I can't really decide. But that's where his grades at. You know, I think he could have done more changes. And you know, he do, if you look at the options he has on the bench, maybe we can give him a little slack there. Now that more reinforcements are coming, he'll have more options to play with on the bench. We'll be we can be more critical of him then. But that's where I'm sitting. 
Pep Biel, man of the match, B minus C plus as far as the coach is great. Looking at what you guys voted, 50% of the votes went to Costas Fortunis. Oh, my goodness. Uh, and then, of course, 37% of you voted Pep Biel, 1% El Arabi, 12% Retzos. Um, but I did see some of you in the chat voting for Rodine. But if the number of you saying Rodine was any indicator, it wasn't even close to the number of people that voted for Costas Fortunis. So... There you have it. Those are your man of the match. That's your coach's grade. We're going on and out here. We're going to get ready and close up. Guys, we're going to try and do post matches. I'm so sorry we didn't get to the post match for Europe, for the European matches the last two weeks. But, uh, you know, everybody was on holiday pretty much except for me and Martial. And Martial works during the week just like I do. So it's a little difficult sometimes to get those rolling. But everyone's back. Gosta's back. Lambro's back. We're going to make stuff work as best we can for post-match. Um, don't forget to check out if you enjoy uh, stats, if you enjoy enhanced statistical analysis, uh, that is on our Patreon. It's $5 a month. We have merch coming. We are securing the merch for the merch tier patrons that we have a couple of already. So exclusive merch for the patrons will be available. We are securing that next week. And we will be getting a merch store. We have a final design meeting coming up next week. So that will be live shipping internationally. So you can get them in Greece. You can get them in the United States. You can get them in Canada. doesn't matter. You get it. We can ship it. And we're, we're trying to get target prices. We're trying to have a, a bunch of different options. But as far as like t-shirts with the designs on them for, for Gate 7 International, different things you want to put on them, we're, we're targeting t-shirts in the, in the 15, 20, 25 euro range. Uh, and then we'll have different options as well. We're trying to get uh, the most affordable things that we can so that uh, you guys can can continue to support and you don't break the bank doing so. But we're going to have a lot of options, some less expensive, some more expensive, but the merch is coming. So look out for that. We'll keep you all updated. And guys, real quick, once again, like and subscribe for those of you that are hanging in there right before we sign off here. Everything helps. And I appreciate all of you. We appreciate all of you because you make this show. You are the reason that this voice and the following in the community is what it is. And you're the reason we get to meet all of these people, these players. You guys are the reason that that this has happened. It's us together. It's not me. It's not Lambro. It's not Costa. It's not other Costa. It's not Martial. It's not even just the five of us collectively. Five. Yeah. Five of us collectively. No. It's all of us. It's er Every single one of you here in the comments, all of us carry this and make it what it is. So thank you, everybody, for building this community along with us, and we hope you stick with us for the ride. This is Gate 7 International, by the fans, for the fans, and we are looking forward to seeing you, hopefully, for post-match this week. Otherwise, we'll see you again next week. Oh, 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 oh,